fast moving targets live from Eurosonic Noorderslag. Uh, two days of reporting on uh, music and uh, tech part of the Buma Music Meets Tech uh, Conference. Uh, another guest, uh, hi, uh, who are you and what do you do? Uh, my name is Robbie Towns and I work in strategic consulting in the music industry. That sounds really good, but uh, when you're at a party, uh, how do you explain it then to your uh, friends? Uh, well, I usually talk about the clients I work with, is probably the easiest way. So I, I do a lot of work with a trade organization based in the U.S. called the Music Business Association. It's focused on essentially anything that touches commerce in the music industry we, we, uh, we spend a lot of time with. So I usually, that's how I would usually tell the story, is to talk about the things I'm working on as opposed to, yeah. you know. So, so I very often still tell people, what do you do or something on the internet, I always say. That's yeah, the, uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey, you've been one of the, uh, of the speakers over here. Yes. Um, so so if, there, if there's one thing you wanted to people uh, to, to, to leave the room with, uh, what was it? Well, I did a talk on curation, and I think uh, given some of the data initiatives I work in, one of the things that's so interesting about that is it's, it's got the potential to change forever for the whole of the music industry, not just in the U.S., because of some things that are happening uh, with the data that's being used to curate music. For the first time, hopefully this year, there'll be a standard that relates to studio musicians and producers and engineers, and that will be the first time in history uh, that that'll happen. And so, I, you know, we taught, I did a lot of illustrations about different session musicians and bands and like the Swampers from Muscle Shoals are talking about the Wrecking Crew from Los Angeles. But the reason I did that is the importance of those artists and musicians and they're kind of anonymized right now and they shouldn't be because they played on some of the most iconic records in all of history. Yeah, that's interesting, isn't it? If you look back, especially because, of course, that was happening in the world of soul, world of reggae, say all the, the important reggae and ska records have yeah. been played with just the same couple of uh, oh, right. artists yeah. as yeah, well, yeah. isn't it? And so uh, if you say curation, what do you mean by curation? Well, it takes a lot of different... Uh, Shapes. I'm, and that was because I'm, I'm, I'm a journalist, so we talk about yeah, curation I mean, as well. You know, well, and as a journalist, so I talked about that. I think the one thing, a lot of times curation is just kind of one blanket statement. And it's really a lot of different ways. I mean, curating, for me, recommending a band to you is very different than I read it on a blog or I read it on through an, some editorial publication. Right. You know, services are also curators. You know, so it takes different shapes and forms across all the different facets of the industry. But the motivations around the way that things are curated are also very different, too. Me telling you, like, oh, this band is amazing and we should go to the show is very different than, you know, someone who's running a business and trying to keep that business and sustain that business based on how they're curating. Yeah. So um, how has, because curation is, of course, uh, from all, uh, all times, uh, has been always, uh, curation has been around all the time. Uh, right, uh, of yeah. course. So, yeah. so what, is, what is different uh, now? Well, I think that there's too much choice. You know, I mean, there's, it's, 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 it can be overwhelming, and so that, and and that is not stopping. There's new services that are launching. You know, it feels like it's almost every day or every week that someone launches a cool idea on a new way to get content, to get music. Uh, so figuring out ways that you know you can for that to resonate with people is a really big challenge. You know, and and then. I think that, that that's different than it used to be. I mean, yes, curation has always been around, but the amount of choice that people have now is it's immense. It's, it's very daunting. And so I think that's for the services, it's one thing to have a catalog of 30 million tracks, but to be able to curate those, recommend and provide an experience that really keeps people engaged, that's, that's a challenge. I mean, at one point it was access and delivery and just being able to do it. That, you know, not that many years ago, the idea of having a catalog of 30 million songs and being yeah. able to provide that on my phone anywhere I want it, yeah. uh, would it seem like, you know, just so far-fetched, but now it's not, and it, it can be done, and, and that, those things are not really challenges anymore. Internet and bandwidth and kind of connectivity is becoming less and less of a challenge, but this one is still one that is very challenging because there's, a, there's such a human element to it that makes sense. It's just, and when I, the talk I did, I talked a lot about the record stores that I love and the ones, I've lived in New York for a while, and one of the things I miss the most is the record stores, but really it's the, it was the people in the record stores that I would talk to that would give me recommendations because their, their hit rate, they would get probably eight or nine out of 10 in terms of the records that they would give me that I would want to buy instantly, and that's how good they were at it. And that, I think there's still, you know, there's still a gap in terms of providing that in, in a digital experience. And I think that's where you have a lot of challenges and things are changing, but it's getting much better as technology gets better. And as those data things start to become more available and scalable, if you can have, if you can do a history of all the studio players in Nashville, that would be an amazing experience for someone. But right now it doesn't exist primarily because limitations with the data available. Yeah. Um. 
so uh, to, to you, uh, uh, the, the, the funny thing is, um, I, the, a lot of the interviews uh, today, a couple of people have mentioned, say, the importance of playlists uh, on, uh, for example, um, uh, Spotify or, right. or, 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 or right. other platforms. Yeah, well. absolutely. So you, so you, you agree? Yeah, I, I do agree because uh, you know, playlisting has kind of become where you have radio promotion on traditional terrestrial radio, and playlisting is really start is filling that role. In the in in the in the streaming world in a very interesting way. I mean, so the way that streaming can scale is so different. If I get added to this one specific playlist, it could have 300,000 followers, and it could those followers could span 30 countries. I mean, Spotify has playlists that are related to electronic music. Or it could be indie, and like I am then relevant in on a in a global way, and that is really amazing. And that's really it's a, it's a it's a pretty fantastic time for because then maybe you end up touring in England or in South Africa. Just because that you find that you have an amazing fan base that's there, yeah. uh, and those kind of opportunities and possibilities are, are have changed drastically, and I think will continue. Yeah. So as an, as an artist, do you now have to play uh, plug uh, the, the the curators of importance the playlists? I mean, there's people that are building businesses off of uh, being promoters for playlists. Really? Yeah. Absolutely. That are just uh, and they, that are about curating and like it's you know there's people that have companies that are that are starting related to and that's one thing that's interesting too. I mean you've seen it with you know for example YouTube people built multi-channel networks and an entire business on top of the business that's latched on and now is really a fundamental way of the way that platform works and I think that you know that's starting to happen and starting to see that for things like what we're, what we're talking about with curation around playlisting and like, you know, being able to pitch that and having the network and connections. Again, similar to the way that radio promo traditionally has worked. A lot of that is about the network and knowing the people that are a part of a part of that world. Yeah. And but now you have it on, in a digital way. So uh, uh, in one sense, a lot has changed. And in another sense, things are the same. That's that's per well said. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, something, and just, well, because word of mouth is still as relevant as it, as it ever was. I mean, we were just talking about val bands earlier, and, like, the likelihood of me going to those shows is very high because it came from a person yeah. as opposed to coming from, you know, just a program or just an online recommendation. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, some things are changed so much and so immensely, but, like, some things are kind of exactly the same, yes. Yeah. Uh, and and is um, are we still in the early phase of of, 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 of curation and, and the, the power and the strength of it, or is already uh, uh, well? Is, is this what it is? I think it's it, it is still early. I would consider even just streaming as a whole to be relatively new in the in the U.S. I mean, and then as a whole, if you look at the difference between kind of how long the MP3 has been around, that's that's a decent amount of time. But streaming as a whole, in terms of you know, kind of scalable, and these, what I was talking about, this access to these on-demand services, I would say that that's still early stages. And so I think that you're seeing, like, in the way that people go about these things, these uh, challenges or different aspects of curation, will start to set apart the ones that will be a part of the long view of that world. But yeah, I would consider it early, okay. I, yeah. So what, so what do you think? Will, will, uh, will or should uh, say, uh, well, I, I talk about Spotify, but of course I talk about streaming services, but right. Spotify is quite big over here. Yeah, of course. Uh, so that's, that's why I mentioned uh, Spotify. So should, um, um, uh, say, say, say do, uh, shouldn't be, uh, shouldn't I be, no, whatever. I tried to rephrase. Okay. Uh, <laughs> sure. The, 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 I was just thinking: uh, shouldn't there be more possibilities for curators to make money out of those services? Shouldn't there be make uh, subscription models, maybe, or maybe should shouldn't the Spotify's of this world uh, give a little bit of back uh, to, to the people who add value to the uh, to the system? I think, and you know, I think that it's still early stages for figuring out like how that would look in terms of a business model within the platform itself. You know, and I, but I, there are. The, what I was describing to you of people that are working as kind of streaming playlist promoters, that's already starting to happen because they are, you know, there, there is a, a financial aspect to where they're approaching the people that run and run these playlists, and you know, so that it's. So I think that yes, the short answer is yes. I think that to do it in a way to make sure that it still seems, you know, beneficial to everyone, and where there's not an advantage that doesn't make sense, and I think that's that, that would, would be the, would be the challenge. Where, how do you find? got to find the balance if you're going to create it an entire other business latched on to people that are curating creating playlists uh, mm -hmm. but it's already started happening it's already it's already in kind of in its early it's I mean almost not I mean there's I know of companies that have been doing things specifically to that for at least a few years yeah. um, 
So yeah, I think, and I think that that will continue, continue to grow. Similar again, the MCN reference for YouTube. I think that you're going to see that these will start becoming in like there'll be a lot of headlines, and it may be around this streaming promotion company. And, you yeah. know, that's that's something that it's been talked about kind of, but like not really as its own business. But I think that, that the likelihood of that happening is is, is yeah. very good. I I, um, I assume a little bit that we've already talked about it, but then again, I want to ask the question again. Uh, for editing uh, um, sure. <laughs> issues later. So if I ask you what is the, the, the most important uh, trend happening right now uh, uh, and why, what, what do you say? This trend in music. Well, in the US, streaming grew uh, almost by 100% year over year from 2014 to 2015. It grew so much that when the, the, the editorial that was done by Billboard attributed um, streaming as a, kind of the integral or key factor for a growth in the entire recorded music market by 15%. And as you know, the recorded recorded music it has, has had some very tough years, and then in even the most recent years, that kind of growth was has, hasn't existed. So for me, that that's very telling. And like the, one of the big questions around streaming is kind of scale and growth, and like what the timing of that. And you no know, one can predict the future, but that that's fantastic news that that's happening. I mean, eventually there'll be a generation of People and they're already actually there's kids already now that talking to them about an MP3 will be like talking to you know someone to talk to me now about a piano roll. It just does not even I don't even understand. I just can't even. It's like, and we're living in that world. There's a they're growing up with just having access and not even thinking about taking care of digital files. But what the good what's positive is they're still growing up, but we're having immense growth in that space to help carry the recorded music industry forward and I think that that's that's very exciting and, and something that and that's just that just came out in you know in the past two weeks um, so that's, that's, yeah. that's a great and are you uh, uh, so, so is it uh, you, you, you still read a lot of um, pessimistic stories of artists uh, about say the the, the, the the amount of money they make from streaming services right. etc so if I ask you is it uh, 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 are good times to, um, uh, to 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 start in the music in the music world to, to be an to be an artist. I I mean yes I think that you know people who want to be artists and musicians it's it's uh, to call I'm trying to think of the best way to phrase it but a calling or you're passionate you can't do anything else a true artist and true musician it's this is all I want to do kind of no 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 matter what and then they're going to pursue that I do think that some of those stories that you're referring to they lack a lot of context in many cases, and sometimes it's just misinformation, and sometimes it's just flat out wrong. You know, the, the thing that's not fair is when streaming just kind of get lumped, in, lumped into one thing, and it's not, you know, and it's not about talking negatively about other services, but they're different. They offer different things and they pay differently, and that context is left out of a lot of the discussions. And unfortunately, artists do carry a lot of weight when they make those comments, they get a lot of press and it goes everywhere, and then other artists take it as, you know, absolute truth, and I mean, that's one of the things, actually, I mean, I do some uh, some work in that area and publisher relations specifically on that. A lot of it is that. It's about just making sure that no one wants to look at tons of spreadsheets and lots and lots of data, but like you need to know who pays what and how it works and understanding that before latching on to sensationalist comments. Because sometimes it's just, it's, uh, it's just it doesn't make sense. It's not no. providing all the entire story. And that happens literally probably every week. There's something that... You bold headline, but not enough underlying yeah. context. Yeah. So, like you say, the, the, of course, it's it's a, it's a passion, a calling, or whatever. It's it's something they 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 need to do. But uh, when we go past that, um, um, uh, good times for artists, with possibilities to, to to make a living of it as well. Well, I think that you have, but you do have to be creative as you for your business model as an artist, and like this, what works for one artist doesn't work for another. And I've spent some time like building what I call kind of a platform for artists and that is you know connecting not just using to YouTube but how do you use it and how are you getting the most out of it don't use every single social media platform just because it's the new kind of buzzed about talked about thing is like you can, you can be very intentional around two to three things and get a much bigger return than maybe using five to ten in some cases I mean I did some research just in the past in the past month that was related to um, DJs and the most popular mixes with a, that a company called Dubset based, based in the US had put out. And what it showed was really interesting is that these the most popular DJ mixes, they were only, they were using, you know, maybe YouTube or SoundCloud, but then really just leveraging like one or two other things. 
like maybe a Facebook page and a Twitter account, or maybe just Instagram and just Twitter, uh, but not trying to be everything everywhere. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's challenging, I think, it's challenging for artists because you also need to be focused on writing good songs yeah. and being a good band and performing well, but you have to almost be a CTO, a CIO, a CEO, and a yeah. CMO all at the same time. So, so an artist now has diff needs difficult, uh, different uh, uh, characteristics than they used to have. They do. I mean, they have to because it, it, you know, especially for a band and our artists in the early stages, it's just it's cost prohibitive to like hire an experienced manager, experienced yeah. you know, you know, digital media company to do whatever it may be. But you can do a lot on your own, and you can do. I mean, there's different crowdfunding sort of platforms like Pledge Music, and then there's there's those are growing. Others like Patreon that are that are out there to provide you with some influx of cash from your fan base. But it's it never stops, and that's one of the things um, just from the releases I've worked on is that there's so many little bits and pieces. If you want to give yourself sort of the best foot forward, that have to be coordinated and to do it well. And but the. the, the the really cool thing about it is that you can. You can do, you can build something that may look very similar just for, let's say, the average user on, you know, average music listener. Looks very similar to something that's on a major record label that you can build yourself and have it look and appeal. It's just, but a lot of a lot of people don't do that. You know, they, it's kind of, oh, the music's done and rush to get it out, but like, this link doesn't go anywhere and all the little bits and pieces aren't coordinated. Um, so it's a really exciting time to be, do things independently. But you do have to have an intentionality and a strategy around it uh, uh, to really to make it work for your benefit. Uh, there's so many choices, almost too much choice. That's one of the biggest challenges, I think. Yeah, yeah. that's what we need curation for as well. That's right. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Curation goes across the board. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Uh, thanks a lot. Have, have a good time uh, the, the, the coming days because you stay uh, in Groningen. Uh, um, uh, well, That's right, through the, the festival until Sunday. Yeah. yeah. Okay, Perfect. thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, Juli, bedankt voor het uh, kijken. Uh, thanks a lot for watching two days of Fast Moving Targets at Eurosonic Noorderslag. Buma Music Meets uh, Tech. Watch all the videos on fastmovingtargets.nl or on our uh, YouTube channel. Thanks a lot.